Well, howdy, y'all, and welcome to, I'm not sure what this is, three for five for Saturday? It's number 103, though, I can tell you that, and I can tell you I'm Bunny Barnes. So welcome today. That coming into the room music was Oh Hanukkah, because it'll be over by the time I get to see you all again. It talks about the holiday with dancing the horror and playing with dreidels and eating latkes and lighting candles and singing happy songs. It was written by Morka Rusman and first published in 1912. It celebrates the miracle of lights. The word Hanukkah means dedication and commemorates the rededication of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. The holiday is celebrated for eight days. This stems from the story that when it came time for the rededication of the temple in in Jerusalem, the 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 uh, there was only worth one one night's worth of oil, and they went to get more oil, but miraculously that oil lasted for the eight day trip that it took them to go get go get more oil and back. So they thought it was a miracle from God, and hence they celebrated for the full eight days. So who we have here today? I know Ken Nash was the first person in the room. Hey, Ken. And Slim's here, Slim Edelman. I saw him yesterday. He's, he's on my, my news feed. Helene Tober, Tober Fowler is here. And Johnson Hogg. Good to see you as well. Oh, my gosh, you're such a great guitarist. Dave Mason is here all the way from Scotland. And Rich Fowler is here as well. Elaine Anderson. So good to see all these faces. I, it's been so long since I've seen you. Hey, John Montanez from, oh, sunny. It's, it's, it's not bad here today. It was sunny today. Not, not as warm as Pacific Grove, I'm sure. Pacific Grove, California. Hello, Rüdiger Krasewski. Good to see you. mich. And Harold Lays from Fort Myers up in Tennessee for Thanksgiving. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Harold. Thank you, thank you, John. Hey, Carol, Fred. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you can be here too. This is. I've just been so busy with my gigs that I haven't been able to get onto the live, and and I just thought, well, let's do it today, because nothing was happening this weekend. So uh, I'm 63 in Tucson. Hey, Jay Dusenberry. Good to see you as well. 63 in Tucson, Steve. I don't know. Uh, it's not. It doesn't. It's not enough to make me want to move to Tucson. That's for sure. So um, you know, this is the holiday season for everyone for for Hanukkah and and uh, and for Christmas, and I'll be playing a lot of these songs on my gigs. So that's what I've been practicing, and I thought, well, why not bring the gigs to you? So yeah, yeah. It's uh, that, oh, oh, that's cold. Hey Warren, I loved your set today. Well, I shared Warren as well on my live, so on my news feed. So you can go back and check Warren if you missed him. So um, this first medley I want to do for you was written, uh, the first part of it was written in 1857. and was actually more of a Thanksgiving song. It talks of this things about um, a one-horse open sleigh trip to Grandma's house. It was written by James Lord Pierpont in 1857. But it wasn't recorded until 1889. And it became most performed um, by uh, as a secular holiday song, and and uh, the the most secular song written around the world. It was recorded by many artists, including Bing Crosby, the Andrews Sisters, Glenn Miller, and and Les Paul even recorded a a guitar track, multi-tracked it on guitar in 1951. Yes, the year I was born. I'll let you do the math. And the second song in the medley is a children's Hanukkah song. There's an English version as well as a Yiddish version. The English version was written in 1927 by Samuel Grossman and Samuel Goldfarb. But the Yiddish version was written by Mikkel Gelphart. The original Yiddish talks about a top made of lead. I did not know that. Whereas the English one specifies it being made out of clay. I know you all know what it is now. Um... There are four four Hebrew letters on it. Let's see, Shin, and He, Gimel, and Nun, and it it uh, it's it's an acronym for a great miracle happened here, which we just talked about, and uh, it was used as a game to distract the.
the guards, while the, the elders studied illegally inside. They studied the Torah, and that was illegal. And in order to distract the Greek guards, the kids would play this little betting game. Great, let's teach the kids to bet. A little betting game out front. And they would, we would, today, we would play for pieces of candy. Um, they call it Hanukkah gelt, Hanukkah money. Um, but they would use any kind of candy. And they would each bet on a letter. And whoever's letter came up, that's who won the pot of candy. This, originally, I got this. This is a toy that I got in the in the 50s. It's probably, probably 1958 or so. Uh, and it was filled with candy at the time. And, and and whoever would win would get all the candy. I would gladly give you all my candy because I'm getting fat. Anyway, take a bet. Let me know if you want Nun, Shin, He, or Gimel. And I'm going to spin it and see who wins. Spin it down there. I know you can't see it, but it is. And it's still going. I'll let you know who wins. It's wobbling, it's wobbling. Here we go. And it's Nun. I can't reach it. It's Nun. So if you bet on Nun, I will send you all my candy. Amazing that a toy made in the 50s is still working. And I use it every year. So it's a great, great thing and a great fun game. So I want to do this medley for you. Uh, the first one is Jingle Bells. And it's uh, based on Tommy Emanuel's arrangement. And the second one is Dreidel. Was Jingle Bells and Dreidel, and Nun was our winner. <laughs> Let me go back and see who I missed. So I got Warren. I did say Warren. Oh, sunny in Scotland, but very cold. Matt Frost tonight. It's been frosty here. Hey, Wiggle. Hey, Miss Wiggles. We have a Miss Wiggles here now too. It's a little different than you. She kind of wiggles her butt when she. When she chases something, it's a little kitty cat. Thanks for the idea, Warren. Sunny and cold in Michigan. Wow, 16 this morning, 34 now. Well, howdy, Toby. Good to see you. Thanks for shopping in. Hello, Ellen Lisa O'Brien. Good to see you. Hey, Robin Gray. 
Just saw you in Warren's room. Hmm. Glad you found me. I really am. Thanks for coming in. Hey, Robert Marcello. I'm glad it sounds good in Jersey. You're not too far away. I was just in Jersey. Uh, thank you, Hel Helene. Appreciate that. Some wonderful comments. I will check the comments. So thank you so much. Um, I want to encourage you to um, share this so it'll be on replay. And uh, this, this probably will go a little longer than usual today. Um, so you can, if you need to check out, please do and, and then come back and watch the replay. Um, I promise I will check the comments later. I want to thank Toby for sharing me on the West Coast and getting me some new fans. And um, uh, I want to say hi to my invisible friends, uh, Kitsuri Kaku, uh, uh, Bob Zaltzberg, Craig Petron, Daryl Anderson, Joel Bichet. Anybody who might be invisible to Ecamm, please let me know that you're watching it live and that I've not mentioned your name. That would be why you're invisible to Ecamm. Um, I just today, yesterday I shared uh, Stevie Coyle's page, and um, in case in case you're wondering about that, if you want your thumb pick to stick on your finger and stick on your thumb, or your regular pick for that matter, wet it. It acts like glue. Hey, David Dare, good to see you. <laughs> That's funny, Warren. Um, Stevie Coyle was shared, just shared him yesterday. I shared Slim Edelman yesterday, and today I shared Warren. Um, sorry, Hel I missed Helen and uh, David last on Thursday night. Um, and then um, tonight, Meredith and Craig will be on at 11 p.m. And then tomorrow morning, Raleigh will be here with his All Requests show at 10.30 a.m. Don't miss Raleigh Brown. And then um, uh, Meredith and Craig are back at 3 p.m. Um, tonight, also, um, Muriel Anderson is having a live stream. So if you go to murielanderson.com, you can, you can join that live stream. Um, just go to her site, and there'll be, uh, I think there are tickets for that. For that. I'm a, I have a season pass, so um, go watch Muriel Anderson. She's a wizard. She's just amazing. Let me clunk you all. Clunk. hope that wasn't too loud. And then, um, so check out Muriel's site, and then she'll be on again Monday night, I believe, with her live stream. I don't know about Lawrence Juber. Toby, have you heard anything about Lawrence doing a pop-up on Monday? Hey, Kim Harris from Nova Scotia. Ooh, I always wanted to go there. Maybe I'll get there someday. It's on my bucket list, that's for sure. I want to uh, uh, say a, a, a huge thanks to Carl Brownfield in uh, Goldfield, Nevada for playing my tunes on uh, the Carl Shop Show on Friday nights, kgfn.org, if you're thinking of giving this holiday season. Um, Jake Victor promotes me on, on YouTube Rhythm Lines. And um, Rusty and Jan uh, have a great show, The Philly Folk Scene, and they always play my tunes. Well, not always, but usually they play one of my tunes. And I just got to spend some time with them at NERFA, the Northeast Regional Folk Alliance Conference in New Jersey, Asbury Park. It was just fabulous. So many talented artists. I have to say, though, I was the only instrumental fingerstyle guitarist there. <laughs> so I was a little bit of a rarity. Um, but it was a lot of fun getting to see all these singer-songwriters and so much new talent. Uh, Livingston Taylor was there as well. And it was really, really fabulous. Um, and, and Rusty and Jan and I shared a room. So it was fun getting to hang out with them and hearing some of their music, jamming a little bit with them. Wow, she's just a wizard on flute. So, yeah, uh, catch them if you can on the Philly folk scene. And then a uh, huge thanks to Terry O'Hara in Ketchikan, Alaska, plays my tunes up there, and uh, Laura Hall and Ginger Hopper in Washington, and Mitzi Quinn and Mark Richardson in Indiana, Rick Polari and Jason Baker at folkmusicnotebook.com. Huge shout outs to all of them for playing my tunes. This coming Saturday, I will be, uh, this coming Friday, sorry. It's coming Friday uh, the 1st. I will be at Regina Marie Design Gallery, if you happen to be local. Um, that's in Skipac. And it's a, it's a wonderful design gallery with ceramics and all kinds of artwork, uh, paintings and, and, and watercolors and uh, sketches and 
uh, also ceramics, like I said, ceramics and jewelry, silver, silver works. Regina uh, makes some really fine jewelry, and uh, Lisa, her her, uh, her wife, is also running the store with her. And it's, it's just a great little gallery. So I'll be playing while people shop. So I hope you come by on the 1st. That's in Skip Back on Friday night from 5.30 to 8.30. And then Saturday night I'll be back at Bray's Restaurant in in uh, it's Worcester, but it's on the other side of Skipback, uh, between Skipback and Lansdale, on Route 73, near uh, the crossing of 363, if you're in the area. I hope you'll stop by. Uh, fine cooking. Chef uh, Scott, Scott Carpenter is the chef, and he just doesn't, he always sends us home with a meal. Really, really good food. Um, the QR code here will take you to my CD. If you don't have it yet, a lot of you do have it. But if you don't, it makes, even if you do, it makes great, great Hanukkah and Christmas presents. Um, and if you're, uh, if you're into, uh, don't have a CD player, you want to download it, you can go here. There's another QR code that will take you to Bandcamp and you can download it there. You can listen to it three times before they make you stop. The website will take you there. The website will also let you listen to replays of all my tunes. Go to the YouTube channel and check out the videos if you need some more of a bunny fix. Um, and then if you're feeling extra generous this, this holiday season and you have any extra you want to sh- throw my way, PayPal or Venmo links are down there. It's never expected, but always greatly appreciated. So thanks so much. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do a couple more tunes for you. Uh, actually, a medley and, uh, and two more uh, for today. Who do I miss? Kim Harris. I did take the ferry. Yeah. <laughs> But but on the other side, when I, I took the ferry in um, off Vancouver to Alaska, but I've never been up to that area, so I want to go up there. Oh, maybe you're talking to Slim, because they were in Yarmouth. Oh, cool. All right, you, you talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> so this next tune was written in 1951 by Meredith Wilson. It was most famously recorded by Perry Como, Be Still My Heart. He was one of my favorites. And also by Bing Crosby. A popular belief is that uh, while Wilson was staying at the Grand Hotel in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, he saw all the sights described in this song. They're not sure. He could have possibly been inspired by his hometown, Mason City, Iowa. They both overlook a central park. So we're not sure exactly where he wrote it. Um, Johnny Mathis recorded it in 1986, and Perry's version has become the biggest version of the song that has been streamed to over 128 billion times on Spotify. And that was in 2020, so it's probably more now. Here's my arrangement. Um, It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas.
It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Thanks, honey. <coughs> Sorry. I, I missed a whole lot of whole lot of chatter down here. <laughs> yeah. I agree, Warren. Yep. Yep, the restaurant makes such fine food. I try I try to do that as much as I can. I think Kim said she's playing some fiddle back. Oh, I'd love to hear that. Oh, that'd be wonderful. I love playing with uh, with Jan and her flute. I would absolutely adore playing with fiddle. That would be so sweet. I will check all these. Hey, Pam Zapardino. Yay, holiday music. Yep, you got it. That's mostly what I'm practicing nowadays. <laughs> I will check all these out. Thank you so much. Kristen Davidson, hi from Australia. Thanks for coming on. I so appreciate it. Ooh, what's it like down under? Let's see, it's, it's, it's summer there, I think. It's getting to be summer. Maybe it's still spring. Oh, it should be lovely there this time of year. Awesome. Hey, Lauren Payne. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Good to see your face come by. So, um, yeah, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas all around. And um, I want to do a couple more tunes for you today. Um, this is a medley. It's The first one is a Christmas carol based on an 1868 text written by Phillips Brooks. The carol is popular on both sides of the Atlantic, um, but to two different tunes. The uh, U.S. version was by Lewis Redner, and the uh, U.K. version is by Ralph Vaughan. Um, and uh, Brooks was an Episcopal priest, then rector of the Church of the Holy Trinity in Philadelphia, my home turf. And he had taken a trip to Bethlehem. That'll give you a clue what the tune is. And then the second one is a traditional English carol. Earliest known printed version of the carol dated to 1760. Older than Stephen. And, and some sources claim that the, carol, the carols date as far back as the 16th century. Others date it later to the 18th or 19th century. And the earliest printed edition of the melody was published in 1820 by William Hone. The historic meaning of the title really says, May God grant you peace and happiness. First one is a little town of Bethlehem. Pam got it, yep. And the second one, hey, Michael McRae, good to see you. Hey, I love Michael McRae. <laughs> what a good, good egg you are. It was so good to see you in Nashville. Um, so the first one is, yes, you got it, Pam Zappardino. A little town in Bethlehem. And the second one, God rest ye merry, comma, gentlemen. Literally, I mean, everybody thinks it's God yes, you, rest ye merry gentlemen, but it's not. God grant you peace and happiness, gentlemen.
Thanks so much. Hey, Lauren Lake. I don't know if Lauren's still here, but but thanks for coming in. I know Lauren from Martin Taylor's camps. So if you're still here, hi, Lauren. Good luck on your exams. Who else did I miss? Oh, thanks so much. Thanks, Kim Harris. Appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, punctuation is very important. <laughs> so um, one more tune for you today. Um, this last number, and, and, and I, I should say, say to you that when I was a kid, you know, we were the only Jewish family in blocks and blocks around. I think there was one other Jewish family on the next block, but we were pretty much the outcasts. And uh, it was it was tough. We had some discrimination going on there. And um, my mom always didn't want us to feel left out. So like at Easter, she'd give us all a little chocolate bunny. My dad was like, I don't see anything. Uh, Christmas, he'd, he'd give, she'd give us a little stocking. Um, she always wanted us to feel, of course we lit the candles and we got a little gift on, on Hanukkah. Um, and, and we celebrated the Jewish holidays as well. But um, I was, you know, I was a singer. I was in school. I was in the choir. So I sang all of these songs, and I always, always loved the Christmas tunes. And um, they were a big part of my life as well. So, yeah, my mom, my mom really loved Christmas. So it was always ever-present. So this last tune is a well-known Christmas carol. It's originally based on a French poem by Placide Capot. It was written in 1843, and it's also known as Cantique de Noël. Composer Adolphe Adam, set to music in 1847. I don't know about my French. I don't know how it's right or not. Maybe you have a better idea, Johnson. You can let me know. Um... It's in 1843, a church organ in uh, roque Moray had recently been renovated. To celebrate the event, the parish priest persuaded the poet, who was a native to the town, to write a Christmas poem. The song was performed in the town in 1847 by opera singer, singer Emily Loray. Unitarian minister John Sullivan Dwight wrote the English version in 1855. This version became popular in the United States, especially in the North, where the third verse resonated with abolitionists. It's commonly used in France during Christmas at the beginning of the Midnight Mass. Hey, Ron the Scott Merrick. Hey, Alex Bevan, Stephen Driebel. I missed a bunch of people. Just in time for the last tune. Hey, John Rossi. Thanks so much for coming in. You can always go back and listen to the replay. So, um, has anybody, anybody guessed it yet? It's Oh Holy Night.
thanks, honey. Woo-hoo. Oh, whole night. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming today. A little bit of um, holiday season for you. Sorry, Kim, I, I, I play on the second fret a lot because of stretches, because of arthritis in my finger. Um, and when I play four-hour gigs, it's sometimes hard to get through them. So uh, I've gotten used to a second fret being a lot lazy a lot, unless I really absolutely have to have that capo off. Um, maybe next time. If I see that before I start, I will take it off. Hey, Barry Coppler. Thanks for stopping in. Because you missed the Hanukkah songs. But you can go back and listen to the replay. So thank you so much all for, for joining me. I will read these, these uh, messages, I promise you. And I will respond to you, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, I won't be here next week. I, have, I do have another gig tomorrow, next week. Um, but I hope to be back on the 15th and then the 22nd. So two more gigs before Christmas, I hope. Um, unless I get another gig. And then I'll try to fit one in somewhere else. So, um, you know, letting the guitar be my voice heals my soul. And all I hope is that my music makes you happy and brings you a peaceful and happy holiday season. Thanks so much for coming. I love you all. Stay safe out there. It's still out there. I've just had a couple friends get over COVID. So be careful out there. Love you all. Happy holidays if I don't see you. Happy Hanukkah. It'll be over by the next time I see you. <laughs>